The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer, and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger bun. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember... We bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am still On a midsummer evening in 1862, three men met in the office of the Territorial Land Company in Middleton, a settlement on the Missouri River near the boundary of Iowa and Dakota Territory. One of the trio was Lake Sanford, a shrewd, ruthless speculator who operated the land company. His equally ruthless companions were Cap Haley, a boatmaker, and Tim Torrance, a rancher. The land speculator said, Boys, I just had word that the new railroads are not going through here as we figured. Not going? Why, that means we're stuck with all the land we bought out. Yeah. Where are the tracks to run? Through the Mandan Indian village in the deep water area. Ten miles from here. That's right. What about the loss we'll take? You got any ideas, Leif? Yeah, Cap. I have ideas. Well, let's hear them. Now, if the Mandan Indians leave the deep water area, the government will open that land for homesteading. We'll hire men to make homestead claims. They'll get titles to the land and then turn it over to us. Can that be done? It can be worked by a man who knows the tricks. <laughs> and I'm that man. By the time the railroad's built, we'll own all the land in the deep water area. And it'll be worth plenty. Leif, it'll cost money to hire the men you spoke of. We've already put a lot into your real estate deal. That's the point, Tim. If we don't do this, we'll lose all the money we put in. This is the only way we can come out ahead. Now, what we make on our Mandan land will more than offset what we spent buying up the land around here. Sounds like a good deal, but... Leif... What makes you think the Indians will clear out? They always do when disaster strikes one of their villages. Yeah. Well, all we got to do is burn down the Mandan village and do it in such a way that the Sioux will be blamed. Just the three of us? Oh, we'll need help. But a dozen men should be plenty. We'll disguise ourselves as Sioux Indians and make a sneak attack at midnight with fire arrows. We can get away before the Mandans realize what's happened. Fire arrows. It's a good idea. The Mandan house is nothing but a light framework of poles covered by dry bark. <laughs> Those places will burn like tinder. Yes, and the houses are close together. If a few fires are started, the whole village will burn. 
As I said, we'll dress like Sue and let the Mandans get a quick look as we ride away. Plan sounds good, Leaf. I'll get my ranch hands to help. They can be trusted. And I know some river routes about to do almost anything for a few dollars. Then line them up, Captain. What about disguise? It'll be easy to pick up buckskins and feathers and put on war paint, but we'll need bows and arrows. Well, I can make those in my boat shop. Good. When will we make the raid? It'll take a few days to get ready. Let's see. Uh, let's plan it for Saturday night. All right. The following Saturday night, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward the Mandan village to visit their old friend, Chief Corn Platter. As they approached the crest of a hill, they saw a red glow and heard distant shouts and cries. Tonto, something's going on in the village. Uh, it looks like fire. Come on, Silver. Urging their horses to greater speed, the masked man and his Indian companion soon reached the hilltop overlooking the village. They saw fire arrows flying through the air, and many of the Manton houses were in flames. Come on, Tonto! A moment later, as he rode downhill, the Lone Ranger shouted, The attackers are riding away! Open fire on them! Ah. The raiders made no attempt to return the gunfire. Bullets struck one man in the shoulder and another in the arm, as the terrorists, with backward glances, spurred their horses and fled. Them right away, keep them heavy. Let them go right in. Hold them. Hold them. As Scout and Silver came to a halt within 50 yards of the nearest burning cabin, the Lone Ranger said, Otto, there's a bright moon. I'm sure you'll be able to see the trail of those men. That's right, Jim I'd like to know where they go. Ride past the village and follow the trail. But stay far enough back so the men will not know they're being followed. Meet Sammy. Easy, Sammy. Big fella. Meanwhile, I'll find out what happened to the Mandans. You leave Silver here? Yes, it's far enough back so he'll not be bothered by smoke and sparks if the wind changes. Come back when you've learned about the attackers. If I'm not here, wait for me. Me do it. Get him up. Come. As he walked ahead, the Lone Ranger saw that none of the pole and bark lodges of the Indians could be saved. Burning like tinder, many had already been reduced to piles of glowing embers. The angry Mandan tribesmen and their families stood in small groups, and apart from these, Chief Corn Planter stood near the blazing council house. He gave the masked man a sign of recognition and said, Good friend, me glad you come. Chief Corn Platter, I'm glad to see that you're alive. Oh, me alive, but village gone. Are many of your people hurt? Me know of only one. Medicine man, take care of him. Him hurt by arrow, but not much. That's good. Me see you, Tonto, ride downhill, shoot plenty fast. Drive off, bad Indian. Me, thank you. You know why you were attacked? Not know. Maybe enemy wants horses. But they didn't take your horses. Not have chance. You come too quick. Me glad horses left. Them needed for move. Move? That right. In morning, we leave here. Find new place for village. You can't abandon your crops. Must leave. Bad Indian make raid. Go away. Them come back. Maybe many more bad Indian come. Maybe steal horses. Kill women, children. We go. We go for that happen. The bad Indians will be captured and punished. They'll not be able to attack again. Oh, friends speak good words. But we not take chance. We move. Here come medicine man. He's bringing you an arrow. Oh. Him say, this arrow from raiders, it won that wound Indian. Oh, may I see it? It's scorched from fire. Oh, this is not a Sioux arrow. Huh? The iron head was cut and shaped with white man's food. We see that. Furthermore, the shaft is made of cypress wood. Me not know cypress wood. It's used for boat building. Chief Corn Platter, are you sure the attackers were Sioux Indians? Me not sure. Them wear clothes, war paint like Sioux Indian. But me hear men shout when raid begin. Them shout white man words. In the excitement of a raid, no Indian would shout in English. You think white men make attack? Yes, I think so. We never heard white men. Why them attack? I don't know unless they want to drive you away from the deep water area. You may have something the white men want. Now, has gold or any other precious mineral been found on your land? Oh, not know of any. Have you seen any white men examining your land? Only men who come from railroad. They measure land, drive plenty sticking ground. Railroad surveyors. Yeah, them not look for gold. Them here only to mark where track go. Did they tell you the railroad would go through here? Oh, them say that. And that's the answer. 
corn planter, do you know of anyone in this part of the country who builds boats? Me know a man named Haley. Him make boat in shop on Riverbank. Where? Ten miles from here in Middleton. This arrow may have come from his shop. You think raiders go to Middleton? They rode toward there. Then me take men of tribe. Go there. Get revenge. No, no, no. You must not do that. Them come here. Burn houses. Because of that, the law is on your side. The law will be against you if you attack the white man's village. I'll go to Middleton alone and try to get proof that the raiders came from there. Silver! Hey, boy! Come here, Silver! Me no way to reach town ahead of raiders. How? Ride in straight line across the cornfield to canyon. But how can I cross the canyon? We make bridge so we plant corn on other side of canyon. Good. I'll see you later. Easy, city big fella. Come on, Silver! As Chief Corn Planter watched his masked friend ride away, he muttered, Him go to danger. Tell me you stay here. But me not promise obey. Bad men kill masked friends. The Mandan chief made a sudden decision. Clenching the cypress arrow in his fist, he waved it overhead and shouted, Aleno, Basta! Way no Kiko! The chief hurriedly selected men who owned horses and good rifles. Soon, nearly a score of braves, with Corn Planter at their head, rode in a column toward the canyon bridge. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita Brown and Serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all... Your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. Now to continue. Late Tim, Cap, and the men recruited by them for the raid had halted several miles from the Mandan village. The three leaders conferred while Leif's wounded arm and the shoulder wound of another man were being bandaged. Bandaged too tightly? Uh, it's all right, Captain. Did you get right. a good look at those two men who fired at us? I just got a quick look, but it seemed to me one of them was an injury. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Why? And it looked to me like the other man wore a mask. Did you notice him, Tim? Yeah. It looked to me like he was masked. I wonder who those hombres are. They must be friends of the Mandans. That's what I've been yeah. thinking. If they are friends of the Mandans... They may try to follow us. But if anyone trails us... We're taking no that. chances. Cap, you and Tim hide in the brush alongside the trail. If the masked men or Indian come along, capture him. We'll ride on slow, so you'll have no trouble catching up to us. Come on, boys. Steady. Get up. Get up. Get up. Riding into the thicket that bordered the moonlit trail, Cap and Tim sat silently in their saddles until the sound of approaching hoofbeats reached their ears. As Tonto drew abreast of the hidden men, Tim the rancher stood in his stirrups and cast the loop of his lariat over the tops of the bushes. It fell over the Indian shoulder. I got him! The rope was drawn tight and Tonto's arms were pinned to his side. Get up there! Cap Haley, riding from behind the bushes, shouted, Keep the rope tight! You, Indian, you're covered! Stop struggling or I'll shoot! Whoa, whoa there, whoa, whoa! A short time later, Tim and Cap, with Tonto as their prisoner, overtook Leif and the other raiders. Leif called... Oh, 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 after we get rid of these disguises, we'll persuade him to tell us everything we want to know. That's your boys. Get, oh, up, get, up, get up there. Get up, get up. While 
while the raiders were still on their way to Middleton, the Lone Ranger, having traveled by a shorter route, rode into a clump of willows on the riverbank near Cap Haley's boat shop. Oh, no, oh, easy, steady, big fella. Dismounting, he left Silver in the thicket and hurried forward to the boatmaker's shop. At the side door, he pried off the hasp of the padlock. There. He left the door open for a quick escape. Moonlight slanting through the windows revealed a partly finished skiff and a supply of cypress lumber. On a workbench, the Lone Ranger found a supply of arrow feathers, scrap metal from which arrowheads had been cut, and one broken arrow with oily oakum tied to the head. Fire arrow. Meanwhile, the raiders, to avoid being seen in their Indian disguises by townspeople, rode north of Middleton to the river. There they turned and followed the riverbank. As they passed the willow thicket where Silver had been left, the stallion, sensing the nearness of danger, tried to warn the Lone Ranger. Pain in, boys! There's a horse in that thicket. The raiders quickly found Silver and recognized him as the horse of the Lone Ranger. Then Cap noticed the door of the boat shop standing open and said, That masked man must be inside my shop right now. All right, bring the Indian. We'll go the rest of the way on foot. What's the plan, Leif? We'll close in on the shop and call on the masked man to surrender. You think he'll do it? If what I've heard is true, he'll do a lot to help his Indian pal. He'll not only surrender, he'll talk. He'll talk? Yes. I want to find out if he's tipped off the law or anyone else about it. Can't let him and the Indian stay alive. We're not going to. Come on, boy. All right. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had heard Silver's whinny and looked through a window. He saw the gang halt near the willow thicket and was still watching when the outlaws approached the shop on foot. In the bright moonlight, he recognized Tonto and saw that his friend was a captive. Then Leif shouted, You in the shop! We've got you trapped and we've got your Indian pal. Tonto. Come out with your hands up or we'll kill the Indian. The Lone Ranger knew that the outlaw leader meant what he said. Make it fast. We know you're in there. Hold the mask against your partner's back. Moving to the open door, the masked man raised his hands and called, I'll do as you say. Keep your hands high and don't try any tricks. My hands are up. Watch him, boys. Keep your guns on him. Toto, have they hurt you? No, Kimasabi. But them plan killers go. Hold it, me see. You're close enough. Now lower your hand real slow and unbuckle your gun belt. You're playing a dangerous game. Up your gun belt. You men may hang for burning an Indian village. Yeah. How can anyone prove we burned it? Easily. Aside from the clothes and war paint you're wearing, there's evidence inside the boat shop to show where the fire arrows were made. Moreover, your horses left a trail between here and the Mandan village. It won't take long to get rid of the evidence. Now take off that mask and let's see your face. If you want the mask removed, step forward and take it off. I told you to take it off! Are you going to shoot me if I refuse? I doubt it. People in town would hear the shots and come here on the run. You'd have a hard time explaining your buckskins and war paints. Take off that mask or I'll run this knife through Tonto's back. Me not afraid to die. Hey, what is that? Hey, Tonto, it's corn platter. Led by their chief, the Mandan warriors rushed from their places of concealment. They came from behind rocks and trees, from behind the boat shop, and below the riverbank. As they closed in, they fired low. Several of the raiders dropped with bullets in their legs, while the Lone Ranger, taking advantage of the diversion, leaped past Tonto and seized Lake Sanford. Uh, let go! Not a chance. Get that knife. Uh, I dropped it. Now I'll drop you. Uh, the Mandans, closing in for hand-to-hand combat, outnumbered the raiders, who soon surrendered. After the fight ended with the Indians victorious, the raiders were tied hand and foot, and the wounded were given first aid. The work was nearly completed when the sheriff and a number of other men from town arrived to investigate the shooting. Oh, what's going on here? Cornplanter, what are you doing here? You were masked man. Oh, him good friend. I'll explain, Sheriff. These men disguised as Indians burned the Mandan village. They went there with fire. The Lone Ranger quickly told what had happened, and the sheriff had only to look at the white men in war paint and buckskins and the expressions on their faces to know that the masked man spoke the truth. And for further proof, Sheriff, 
Look in Cap Haley's boat shop. That's where the arrows were made. Cap Haley? And Tim and Lee? Well, I'm downright surprised you ornery not No, no, Sheriff. It was all Abe's idea. He talked us into the deal. If it hadn't been for him... You and Tim were equal partners. You stood to make as much as I did. That was your idea. Now that'll do. Corn planter, you and your men shouldn't be here. Me bring men cause me think masked friend in danger. They were fighting on your side, Sheriff. Well, they better get back to their own place now. I've got men enough to take the prisoners to town. Chief Corn planter, you need have no fear that these enemies will return. Mm, that's right. We stay in Deepwater Village. Build new houses. Harvest crops. You must not be... Here's Silver. All right, Tonto. We're ready to leave. Boys, start moving the prisoners to town. We'll see you, corn planter, when your village is rebuilt. Oh, that's good. Easy, steady, big fella. Adios. Come on, Silver. Hey, hold on. Rather, I didn't get around to questioning that masked man. What part did he have in this deal? Him, good friend of Mandan. Good friend of white people. Him, Lone Ranger. Silver, hey! I'd like to read you something. The label on a loaf of Merida old-fashioned enriched white bread. And I quote, Enriched means that eight ounces of this bread supplies the following percentages of minimum daily requirements for these essential food substances. Thiamine, vitamin D1, 90%. Riboflavin, vitamin B2, 66%. Niacin, another B vitamin, 75%. Iron, 62.5%. Calcium, 20%. But that's just the outside story. What goes into Merida old-fashioned white bread is another story. A story of a rich old recipe. A recipe that produces an old-fashioned bread that's rounded at the top with a crust that's golden brown, firm yet tender, moist, and very delicious. So when you buy a Merida old-fashioned enriched white bread, read what's on it and remember what's in it. Listen to The Lone Ranger. The following morning, The Lone Ranger, posing as a cowpoke, was taken to the barge with the other workers. He was put to work with the others, leveling the mud and silt that had been scooped into the hold of the barge the day before. Finally, at noon, a bell rang, and the men stopped work to go on the single park deck aft of the barge and to eat their noontime dinner from pails they had brought with them. The Lone Ranger had waited a chance to look over the barge. On the flat deck aft, there was a wooden superstructure containing the crew quarters and the storeroom. Just above the storeroom door, there was a grilled air vent. The Lone Ranger was out of sight of the others, so he decided to pull himself up and look through the grill. The figures huddled against the far wall, four of them. Looking for something, please? All right, get down, get back. Just wondering what was in there. That's all, Mr. Sheldon. Too dark to make out anything, though. You're not fooling me. You walk in front of me around the side of the bar and keep reaching. Sure. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Kendall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.